collector. He is, of course, the reigning, defending, undisputed Impact World Champion, the Impact Grand Champion, and no doubt a few other titles in his arsenal as well. Austin Aries, welcome to the teleconference. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Well, we can hear you perfect. Austin, uh, how are things going for you? Not too bad. Just got done with a, uh, a good workout, and now just uh, enjoying some of the beautiful weather out here in Vegas. All righty. Well, Austin, a lot to talk about, and let's get right to it. Sunday night, April 22nd in Orlando, Florida, you will be in the main event at Redemption, live on pay-per-view against two of the biggest stars of Lucha Underground. You put the world championship on the line against Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix. Your thoughts? I mean, listen, it's going to be an exciting matchup. Uh, you know, these two guys right now, the most talked about competitors going. Uh, you know, obviously got to step in the ring with them during the uh, joint show between Impact Wrestling and, and Lucha Underground. Uh, you know, and as I said in, 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 uh, in my promo that I, you know, spoke about at House of Hardcore, you know, Pentagon came out victorious. Those guys showed up. They left it all in the ring. They're professionals. And they deserve an opportunity. So we're going to give it to them at Redemption on the 22nd. And uh, should be a hell of a matchup. Awesome. Let's talk about these two guys. Pentagon, submission specialist, five sides of fear, the breaker of bones. Then there's Phoenix, a high-flying sensation. Uh, Mm -hmm. Pentagon and Phoenix, they've waged wars against each other. But they've also aligned with each other. They are the Lucha Brothers. How do you combat these two? Uh, well, you know, as you said, <clears throat> they both have different styles, and uh, and obviously they both know each other very well. And I'd be lying if I didn't say I'm a bit concerned that, you know, considering that they are brothers, I know they don't always uh, see eye to eye. But, uh, you know, in some ways I may feel like I'm a, I'm a bit outnumbered. Uh, you know, I'm used to having a target on my back, but here I'm going to have two guys who know each other very well, um, bringing two different styles, and, and I'm sure uh, both of them would like to walk away as the Impact World Champion. Austin, I have to ask you about the mental game going into this. Um, you stepped in the ring with them at WrestleCon, but you did not come out with the victory. Sure, you didn't get pinned or you didn't submit, but you didn't win. You don't have a lot of time to prepare for this. How are you feeling mentally going into this? I, I mean, I feel good. You know, I, l- l- listen, uh, you know, things change. And, uh, you know, that's, that's part of life. That's inevitable. And, you know, part of what makes a great you know, professional wrestler, part, part of what makes us a successful person in general is uh, being able to, you know, move, move when you need to move, be able to, you know, uh, be lim- limber, agile, and, uh, you know, roll with the punches, so to speak. So, you know, listen, I'm feeling good. It was a really successful weekend uh, in New Orleans. Uh, I came out of that feeling relatively healthy. Uh, I've got a nice week now uh, or two to recharge. Uh, you know, get myself mentally and physically prepared, and uh, you know, I expect to walk into the 22nd uh, ready to rock and roll. All righty, Austin. Before we open up for media questions, we do want to ask you though: uh, Will you be reaching out over the next 10, 11 days to others on the Impact roster, Sanjay Dutt, maybe even Sammy Callahan, who've stepped in the ring in the past with Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix, just for uh, additional insight, tips, suggestions? No, nah, not really, because I don't really necessarily trust any of those people. I'll uh, I'll do my own. I'll do my own studying on my own. I, I trust my eyes, and, and uh, you know, there may be a person or two that I confide in, but but for the most part, I have to keep that stuff close to the vest. All righty, Austin. I appreciate it. We're going to get going with some media questions here. Media asks, uh, once again, as always, please identify yourself, your media outlet, and please limit it to one question at a time. To get in queue for questions, please hit star six. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Speak up a little bit, sir. This is Harry from NBC Sports Radio, Pro Wrestling 247 On Demand. Uh, hey, Harry. Thank you for the great performance at Lucha vs. X in New Orleans last Friday. My question is, with the ever-changing state of recently in the world of professional wrestling, now that Lucha Underground talent will be a part of the main event at Redemption on the 22nd, have you considered challenging for the Lucha Underground Championship? 
Uh, I'll be honest, it, it hasn't really crossed my mind. You know, we'll, uh, one thing at a time, Harry. I got a big match up here, obviously. You know, I was kind of preparing for one direction. Now, now I'm not having to kind of prepare for another direction. So, listen, uh, you know, once I walk out of there, you know, the 22nd, still the Impact champion, um, you know, then maybe I can start thinking about challenging for, for the, you know, Lucha title. But right now I'm just going to take care of uh, what's in front of me. Brian Ryder for Main Event Radio. Austin Aries, uh, your thoughts on the departure of Alberto El Patron? Uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but we're moving on, you know. And, uh, you know, all things being equal, I thought the matchup I ended up having uh, at the joint show ended up being uh, more challenging, uh, you know, and, and more exciting. So we're, we're moving forward. We're looking forward to the 22nd and, uh, you know, really trying to capitalize on some, you know, again, some things that maybe – a year or two ago, we, we won't be talking about the wrestling landscape. And, you know, we're, we're going to have a couple of the top stars of Lucha Underground, you know, competing for the Impact World Championship. That's pretty exciting. Any other companies that you'd like to partner with in the future? I'm looking to work with any company that, you know, that, 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 that that's interested. You know, I've, I've talked to a number of companies. Obviously, you've seen me, you know, pop up other places like Ring of Honor, had discussions with the NWA. Uh, you know, had reached out, uh, you know, some to New Japan. Um, you know, so, you know, but that being said, I can only be so many places at once and I can only represent so many companies at once. And right now my focus is on representing Impact Wrestling the best that I can. Hi, Austin. It's James over at the Wrestling Epicenter. It's a pleasure to talk to you today. Thanks, I wanted to ask you about the weekend that we just had where you were yeah. part of multiple shows. I mean, it just seems like it was just a raging success for professional wrestling. As a wrestler who's been around the indies and now has been around what, whatever we call the current wave of things going on, how do you feel about the current landscape of professional wrestling? Oh, man, it's, it's, it's really unlike anything I've seen since, you know, since I started. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. And, and listen, first and foremost, uh, you know, we have to give the credit because if WWE wasn't running WrestleMania with 100,000 wrestling fans all, you know, all conver- convening in the same location, um, what happened in New Orleans wouldn't be possible. That being said, uh, the fact of the matter is that outside of, of the, you know, the WWE bubble, uh, there's wrestling fans that want to consume all different types of forms of professional wrestling. And the awesome thing is now is that there's so many companies that are providing quality professional wrestling. There's so much talent out there. And, uh, and you can see there was you know, so many successful shows that were run over the course of those three, four days. Uh, everybody I talked to, uh, you know, we're having a, a very good financial weekend uh, for a lot of these guys, the biggest weekends of the year for them. And uh, that's just a great thing for wrestling, man, because at the end of the day, you want as many people who love this art form to be able to make a good living as we can. And the more, and the more successful and profitable places are, the more competition there is, uh, the more those spots are available. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Austin. It's Neil Rogers from Calling Sports Magazine. Um, how are you doing? Great, thank you. Good to hear. Um, my question is, most people will never experience being a world champion, and yet for you it seems to be something that you do every other day. How, how does it feel to be regarded as one of the best in the world? Uh, I don't know. I guess I, I don't really think, of like, think about it in, in, in those terms. Uh, that's, you know... Where I rank as far as best or worst is that's that's people's opinion. Um, you know, I just try to go out there every time and, and and just deliver the best of my capabilities with whatever I'm given. You know, and I feel like the, the more I'm able to contribute, um, you know, creatively, the more I'm able to contribute from a, a mental aspect into what do I do, um, it, it seems to it seems to be even better. So, uh, listen, I always appreciate the opportunity to be someone who is a key figure in a promotion to be someone who can, you know, be an ambassador. And uh, so right now I'm very lucky to be in a position that, especially with the landscape that wrestling's in right now, to find myself in the spot to be representing a number of companies and, and, all, and also trying to you know, represent um, this mindset of, of companies working together to continue to build on this momentum that the professional wrestling world has right now. Thank you. Hi, Austin. It's Lee Med from Live Radio over here in the UK. Thanks for taking the time this morning. Uh, it was just a very quick one. Obviously, you are the, the collector of belts. You perform all around the world. 
and, and here in the UK, we're very excited about Impact Wrestling returning to the UK uh, for the first time in a number of years. But as a performer, where do you get the most enjoyment of performing? Is it Asia? Is it the, the US? Or is it over in Europe? Uh, I, I don't know that it's maybe a geography thing, right? Uh, because, you know, when I go over to England, the fans there, are, are, you know, they got so much energy. And that's always been one of the great, great places for Impact Wrestling. One of our great, you know, fan bases has been in, in the UK. And, and, and those tours every year were always so successful. Uh, you know, going to Australia, those fans over there, you know, they, they're, you know, historically, they haven't had a lot of great wrestlers over there. They're starting to get some big names that maybe, you know, people are really excited to see. And, and so, so that's a great market, too. But, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, I, I think there's different types of wrestling crowds. And I think that, you know, we have our, what we call our smart audience that maybe try to mm. analyze and break down the art form a little, a little more. And that's where they get their entertainment value. And then I have, you know, then you have what you just kind of consider just kind of your, um, mainstream fans who just really maybe you're more your family oriented fan that just wants to come to the show and, and uh, they don't understand the the ins and outs necessarily uh, but they just want to cheer and they want to boo and they just want to have a good time right and um, if you're asking me like I really appreciate going out in front of those types of crowds and just taking them on that emotional roller coaster of of you know cheering and booing and screaming and yelling um, and, and maybe not breaking down my technique of everything that I do in the ring uh, or, or time on matches or, you know, decide how many stars it wants. So we're looking forward to having you back over here in the UK. Thanks for taking the time, my friend. Thank you. Also, we have an email question from Jerome. He asked, have you ever seen a move or a spot that made you think, I wish I came up with that? Ooh. Hmm. Off the top of my head, I mean, I know there are. I just can't think of what they were off the top of my head. Uh, you know, let me let me try to think. So, the running. How about the the, the running drop kick in the corner? You know. Oh wait, maybe I did kind of come up with that. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's been some over the years. You know, a lot of times it's not necessarily maybe not necessarily a maneuver. Uh, but maybe something creatively from a from a psychological standpoint uh, that that maybe you go that was pretty clever. Uh, and maybe I wish I would have came up with that one. Um, but as far as you know, as far as maneuvers in and of themselves, I think more likely I see something, especially what some of these guys do nowadays. And it's not so much I wish I would have came up with it; it's I wish I could do that. <laughs> Hi, Austin. This is BQ from the Impact Lounge. Um, I feel like you're becoming one of the more respected and obviously well-traveled stars in wrestling. And one thing that Impact haven't had much success in over the years, I'd say maybe a ring of honor, is being able to sign some of the hotter indie names who have that potential to generate buzz and really put butts in seats. Uh, you mentioned sure. being an ambassador. Are, are you hoping to be you know, maybe a late liaison between Impact and other wrestlers who have previously may not have the interest in coming to the company for one reason or another? Yeah, I think I'm someone that can do that because I think, uh, you know, A, I've, I've had a history with this company. You know, I've been here from different, from different regime changes and things of that sort. And I think the people who know me the best um, know that I wouldn't be back here if, if a lot of what the old, you know, the old guard and the old hat kind of was, was perpetuating was still going on. Um, and I think people, whether they like me or they don't like me, know I'm a pretty straight shooter. So I think from those regards, you know, I, you know, I can give people a pretty unbiased opinion of what I think it's happening right now in Impact Wrestling. I think, you know, and, and, and I'll be honest, I, I, I didn't think I'd be saying this uh, a year or two years ago or five years ago, but right now I think from a um, from the, uh, just an overall cultural standpoint, uh, from a locker room standpoint, from coming to work and having fun and being relaxed, uh, taking our job seriously but not looking over our shoulder, not walking on eggshells, not being stressed out, not, you know, and, and really having some creative freedoms. Um, I think this might be the best locker room in wrestling. And uh, because you have, you have this great mix of guys like myself who have kind of been there, done that, who are hungry for their own reasons to prove themselves. Then you have a bunch of younger guys who are also you know, getting their first taste of maybe a national spotlight to step up and they're hungry. And then you have a whole new team, you know, coming in from, you know, Scott and Don and Sanjay and the guys, um, you know, that really want to prove themselves and really do want to make this different and, 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 and make this something uh, that can be great and that people can come and have a good living. 
And, uh, and we're going to create our own culture and our own structure here and our own way to do business and our own way to have relationships with companies, have relationships with talent to create something that's appealing and unique that, you know, when you talk about being able to sign guys that have potential or be able to keep guys who have some value, if you can offer them a work environment that, uh, that's a, that is very hard to find in this industry as far as, you know, being able to make good money, be able to keep your intellectual properties, be able to come to work and have a good time and not be walking on eggshells. Uh, you know, looking over your shoulder constantly, uh, having some input on your direction, your character, who you are, uh, this is the place to be. And, that, and I want to keep building that so that this is the place to be to give people an opportunity and an option who don't want to have to do it the other way. Thank you. Hey, Austin. Uh, this is Vicky from Sportskeeda. How are you doing today? Doing very well. Thank you. Great. Uh, we had a chance to catch up with uh, your friend Jimmy Jacobs on one of the teleconferences, and he said that the best Austin Aries is the real Austin Aries. Is that something you're looking forward to doing in the future? I may need you to repeat that one more time. I'm getting my Google yes. Translate. Uh, Hold on. <laughs> one more Hello? Time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so essentially, uh, we had a chance to catch up with our friend, uh, Jimmy Jacobs, and he said that uh, you are at your best as a yield. Is that something you're looking forward to doing in the future? Uh, you know, as far as that goes, you know, right now, uh, you know, it's working It's working for me to, to uh, you know, I, I try to always just kind of be myself, um, and, and I don't really try to, I, I don't really try to, you know, skew too much one way or the other. Um, but yeah, there's a certain times I kind of dial up my disdain for people and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, but right now I'm, I'm enjoying, uh, you know, kind of, to be quite honest, I'm enjoying, uh, be, being embraced by the people and, uh, and for what I'm trying to do and the success I'm having. And for right now, I think that's, uh, you know, that's the way to go. And, you know, uh, uh what happens in the future happens in the future when it's time to put my thumb in somebody's eye, uh, it may happen. And it will be fun. Hi, Austin. Uh, Ryan Bowman from the com. You were talking about having freedom, and I've heard from a few people in the company that, especially on promos, they feel like they've been given a lot more range to kind of explore things. How important is it to have your quote-unquote own voice when you're trying to communicate with the crowd and get your point across? Um, I mean, for me, it's very important because, you know, I, I, I would say this, if you, if you strip away everything that makes Austin Aries unique, which is really my voice, my wit, um, you know, maybe some of my moveset, maybe, you know, just some of these things that make me unique. Um, if you strip that away, I'm just kind of an older, small white dude, you know, and there's not a lot, there's not a lot to work with there. Right. So for me, it's important to, to be able to go out and do what's made me successful for 17, 18 years, because it's been a journey of figuring out what that is for me, you know, and, and to change it up at this point in the game, um, to me, uh, it's not, it's not getting full value out of me. It's not using me for, for my full potential. And, uh, but I think for everybody, listen, when we go out there, I'm going to fail or I'm going to succeed. I want it to be because of, of my own, my own merits. Right. You know, and uh, we all have to work within we all have to work within guidelines. We all have to work together. And there needs to be a certain level um, of continuity and quality control. But I think, you know, as as the people kind of run and directing creative, as you kind of look at your landscape of your roster, you kind of identify the guys that you need to maybe produce a little less because it's they can they can do them better than you can do them. And then the guys that are still finding their way that are younger that really do need the guidance and the help to kind of help create who they are and find that. And so you can't treat everybody the same in that regard. And I think right now with impact, finding that balance uh, is, has been something that's really helped us in allowing you know guys the freedom to, to have their voice out there and then helping shape and direct where it needs to be shaped and directed. Also, we're going to go to an uh, email question from Jordan, who asked, uh, would you con consider rejoining the X Division, and who is your uh, all-time, uh, basically wants to know your Mount Rushmore of X Division talent? 
Oh, boy. Um, would I rejoin the X division? I mean, I'll, I'll rejoin any division if, if it makes sense, right? Uh, so I certainly have no problem with that. Uh, right now I'm just trying to do something I haven't done before. And, and as we know, um, I've, I've done a lot in the X division. Uh, and with that, I probably would have to put myself on there uh, somewhere. But I think, I think uh, you know, before, before myself, you have to go to, you know, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels. Uh, I think, you know, you know, I think those three guys and, and kind of when they got the spotlight to do their three-way uh, program really elevated the X division, um, you know, and I don't know how many guys you can add because you can add a couple other guys on there too for, for different reasons that have been important to the division over the years. So, uh, but if I'm going to name four, uh, I guess I'll go with those four. Hi, Austin. Stephanie from Steel Chair Magazine, UK. Uh, mm. Hope you are right. Um, I'm coming a little late in the call because I have technical issues, but I hope I'm not going to ask you a question uh, that was uh, already um, asked. Uh, but um, so you had a great, you're going to have a great opportunity again, the um, Pentagon Dark and. Um, uh, Phoenix, uh, Ray Phoenix on uh, Redemption. Um, but Pentagon Dark is the Lucha Underground champion. And I was asking myself, are, are you interested to work with Lucha Underground and why not become Lucha Underground champion? And well, if you allow, if... Continue, sorry. I wanted to wish you a few days earlier an happy birthday. Oh, well, thank you so much. I, I do appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, someone, someone touched on that earlier about that. And, you know, you, you make an interesting point that, you know, uh, he, he is the Lucha Underground champion. And uh, it'd be interesting if maybe I, I, I made him put up his title, uh, you know, uh, in this three-way. Uh, that, that would be fair, right? Or at least somewhat fair. But uh, I, I'm interested in working with Lucha Underground. I think, I think right now it's a good relationship for both companies. And, uh, you know, right now as the champion, uh, that would put me squarely in the mix uh, to not only be working with them, but sure, uh, I, I would challenge for the title in the right in the right scenario. But right now my job is to make sure I keep mine on the 22nd of April. But, hey, if Pentagon, wa uh, Pentagon wants to put up his title, I, I, certainly wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't oppose. I'd like to collect another belt. Uh, hi, Mr. Harris. Uh, this is uh, Marcus Green from Total Restaurant Magazine. Hello, Marcus. Uh, hi. Um, obviously, one of the many shows that we, we've seen you um, appear on on WrestleMania weekend uh, was uh, Ring of Honor, Super Card of Honor, which were great on commentary, by the way, pun intended. Thank um, you. Yeah. Uh, now, now, obviously, that's one of the, the companies that you returned to. You had a great stint there, um, you know, great title lane. And, Great title lands or whatnot, but you now are kind of getting involved around obviously having your sight set now that you're the bell collector around regaining or for the first time attaining the Ring of Honor Television Championship. Exactly. Uh, my question, yeah, my, my question is, um, you know, obviously, you know that, that one of the benefits now that Impact has is having all these working relationships with different wrestling companies. Um, have you? My question is: Have you seen some of the positive changes since you returned to Ring of Honor in that company that you've seen an impact? And if so, if it was possible in the future, would you like to see those two companies uh, collaborate? Uh, well, obviously, I mean, you know, going back to Ring of Honor, uh, just you know, stirring the pot a little bit. And yeah, I've never had the television championship there. And uh, I mean, what better way to make an impact as the Impact World Champion than to be on their television? It's kind of the way I thought about it. Um, but, yeah, obviously there's success right now. I mean, they just – there are almost 6,000 people, uh, you know, in New Orleans. Um, you know, I, I think their business is, is as good as it's ever been. So, you know, right now um, I'm just – I'm trying to – you know, I, I'm trying to go around and do what I can do. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's been cool to have an opportunity to, to kind of do some stuff with Ring of Honor, you know, to kind of make people scratch their head a little bit and wonder what's going on. And I think that's good for wrestling. And I think, you know, right now, as far as how much they do or don't do business now or in the future, uh, you know, I'm sure those companies will, will you know, will, will discuss that and figure out what, what's in the best interest for, for both of them. But 
right now, if I can kind of be a common thread that helps maybe, you know, build some bridges, uh, then, that, then that's uh, what I'd like to do. So I just start calling me the bridge builder. Also, I have an email question from Septile Project. Kind of an interesting two-part question. What do you think music in a, a wrestler's entrance, what does that impact have on uh, on wrestling as a whole and that uh, character? Uh, I mean, it's huge, right? I think I think it plays a lot into it. Um, you know, I think uh, it can be huge, right? I think that, you know, there's certain songs you hear. I know as a kid growing up, when I still used, you know, and back then, you had to worry about copyrights and things like that. But when I heard certain songs, whether it was I Have a Tiger or Iron Man, I immediately thought of wrestlers, you know. So you start to identify, and obviously music is a huge part of culture. So whenever you cross over like that, uh, you know, it just adds to the to the impact. And, and